What's up, everybody? Ryan the Mighty Quinn here, the cornerman underscore MMA, talking some more MMA scoring. Uh, we did a great piece last week on what damage is and how to score first in mixed martial arts. Um, damage is the key, th the, the key component. It is a damage game. And then we work our way down with the tiebreakers. So next on the on the tiebreaker list would be dominance. Dominance is the next thing. Now, um, uh, first off, like I, I want to say, like you know, we're we're, we're going to read from the group. before I get into any examples, we'll just read so we know what dominance is. But I'll get into why I was a good example of a dominance winning fighter. But here's the definition. All right, all right. So dominance, right underneath impact slash damage dominance as an mma as mma is an offensive base sport dominance of a round can be seen in striking when the losing fighter is forced to continually defend i mean that's pretty obvious you know if they're just covering up they're getting dominated you know with no counters or reaction taken when the opponent presents himself presents themselves okay so that's a fighter just not reacting but taking but take but not taking damage but they're they're getting scored on dominance in the grappling phase can be seen by fighter by a fighter staking attacks merely holding a dominant position or positions shall not be a primary factor in assessing dominance i'm glad they saw that so you can't just sit in side control and expect to be dominating um you know it is a fight at the end of the day we know that uh, you can't sit in half guard. Half guard is a better example because you really can set up shop in half guard. Um, but you can also punch in half guard where a lot of people just try to hold on for dear life. Okay. Now let's see. What the fighter does with these positions is what must be assessed. Half guard's the a perfect example of what I was talking about. In the absence of dominance in the grappling phase, as set forth in paragraph three of the promulgated rules to be considered dominant. There must be a singularity or a combination, some types of submissions, attempts, strikes, or an overwhelming pace, which is measured by improved or aggressive position changes that cause the losing fighter to consistently be on a defensive or reactive mode. Okay. So not that this would happen, but this is another something I think of, let's say like a wrestler just shooting in constantly not taking down and holding up camp like this is what i'm saying here but a, a one if one fighter is wrestling just constantly shooting his high crotch to a double to a single back and just chaining that together that would be considered dominance or another thing let's let's say we're against the fence and you're holding them there and you're shoulder popping foot stomping all minimal stuff not doing major damage but that's showing dominance you're doing something to where your opponent's constantly defending like against the fence is good because they're constantly, they're flat on the wall. They get, they're not working out, you know, they're getting dominated. They're not getting damaged. They're getting dominated. Um, why was I a good dominant dominance fighter? Uh, I unfortunately tend to, you know, I would always fight bigger guys. I would take them down. I would score with the punches, the rabbit punches to the body and stuff like that. Um, I didn't take a lot of damage, but I didn't give a whole lot of damage for the most part either. I only had like a few fights where I gave a lot of damage, you know, good for me. You know, I stayed safe, but I'm a good example of what a, what a dominance fighter is. Okay. What is not dominance? Okay. That now, so let's not get this confused. Let's not pretend it's all wrestling. Wrestling is just a good example of this. What is not dominance? Okay. Let's, let's think here. Um, think about your wrestlers that take people down and want to hang out in the guard that would not be dominance. In fact, that's very frowned upon for so many. Of course, a lot of the referees and judges don't want to see you just laying and praying as they call it. Um, so a, a good example I would think of is, uh, is like the earlier UFCs. I know like, you know, Kevin Randleman took down boss Rudin, although I thought Kevin Randleman did more damage than they gave him credit for. Um, I'm trying to think of another good example here of people that just laid down. Oh, hoy Oh, Ken Shamrock voice, Hoist Gracie too. He took down Hoist. He did nothing with it. He hung out in the guard for 35 minutes, 36 minutes, maybe even. Um, that is the perfect example. That was the most boring fight ever. You know, that was, he just took him down and did nothing. Hung out with his elbows in. And he was totally fine with that. Ken Shamrock did. So check that out. So now what is not that? Now I know a lot of these fight. Well, one of these fighters I'm about to mention, he does not get the, um, he, he does not get, 
uh, uh, discredited on this, but Habib Nurmagomedov, he is a damaged fighter. You know, he is making people tired. He is wearing on them when he's riding them out. He's punching. He's busting them open. That's a damaged fighter. Same with Ben Askren. I know a lot of people always gave Ben Askren crap for being boring. He was not. Ben Askren was absolutely devastating on the ground for so many levels. Both men had a good submission game as well, which brings me right back. We did kind of skip over something I want to talk about here. Uh, the dominance in grappling phase can be seen by fighters by fighters staking dominant positions in the fight and utilizing these positions to attempt ending submissions or attacks. Okay, so think about someone who's, you know, not just saying staying in half guard or side control and they're not punching, but let's say that they are, you know, going from arm triangle to arm bar, um, triangle choke with the legs to omoplata to arm bar, stuff like that. That's considered dominance. So this is. This stuff is not considered damage. Um, I think it should, you know, this is my argument. I think this stuff needs to be brought back up because, you know, like this is so like a lot of this stuff can make you tired trying to defend this. You know, if you're not, if you're not used to defending submissions nonstop, then you don't really know how much damage it's being done to you. You know, that's, that's just what I'm going to say. I think that's something that should be added to the judges um, uh, officiating criteria, you know, uh, just, just feel the submission attempts and feel what it's like to defend them. It's tired. It's it's frustrating. It's mentally exhausting. This is why I feel like that kind of stuff should be raised to the damage level. But it's dominance, and we know it's dominance now. And it is, I mean, I think that kind of proves that striking is favored in mixed martial arts right there over submission attempts right here. It, it, it specifically says what submissions are scored on dominance, and then it's, it says up top in the damage. It talks about uh, the striking damage and very little of the submission damage. It talks about chokes more so than the appendage locks. I just mentioned them briefly, but coming from here, it looks like it's more of a it's more of a dominance thing. So, yeah, guys, uh, let me know what you think about all that. You know, I think that this was a good piece. It's a good focal point on what we're looking for in part of damage uh, dominance. You know, so now let, let's scroll down a little bit. So. This, the next one's a fun one. Personally, I think that dominance, it should be the more, I think this should be the more heavily favored. You know, I know it's a, it's a fight. Uh, we're, we're looking to, we're looking to, you know, hurt our other, hurt our opponent, but I feel like dominance gives you the ability to assess everything as far as, you know, like, um, what's being shown. It talks about the striking combinations, getting your opponent to cover up and do nothing. It talks about, it doesn't really mention, it mentions the wrestling, the takedowns a little bit uh, in the grappling, but we get it. Okay. We get it. The wrestling takes it there. It shows dominance. If you ride them out, you know, you're, you're improving position. It talks about improving position in there. I think that dom that dominance should be, because you want to dominate a fight, you know, to win, you know, the damage, you know, you could do damage on one overhand punch, but you're only throwing one punch, you know, and then you know, that, how is one punch going to be the main scoring factor, which it's not, but you can argue that it is according to the verbiage verbiage is everything. So um, that's another argument. You know, that's just me though. I don't think, I think I'm alone on that one. Uh, that I, I think that this would add to more scoring, more options to score. But um, yeah, I, I think that's what I got guys. So uh, let me know. I'll uh, be tuning in later this week uh, for after the UFC, we're going to break down some fights and next week, more scoring. Bye.